I, there was something else I wanted to talk about too. And now the light's coming in. I always think it looks kind of cool when it does that. Um, uh, but yesterday I was watching this movie last night. Um, I watched this movie called um, the Boynton, uh, Boynton um, Beach Club. I think it's on Amazon and I think it's new and it is, uh, it's cute. It's all these old people in their own place, of course, Florida. Um, but they, uh, I really like when they show, you know, older people, like you can build communities. There's a lot of older people. Like I know that down in Arizona and stuff, I've heard of people like the snowbirds and stuff. You go down there and everybody's just, a whole neighborhood of old people and they're out there having fun, having drinks, playing games. You know, like these people came from a time when connection was, um, you know, a part of the human experience. So they are able to connect and have fun and do a lot of stuff. And I think, you know, what a cool way, you know, as an older person who is in retirement to just go out and be around other people who aren't trying to you know, like right here where I'm at, you know, I like having a neighborhood because it, uh, you know, when I moved out here, I didn't know it was going to be in a neighborhood. I thought I was out further away from people and in the pictures it looked like I didn't see any houses. And, um, but now that I'm here and now that I know there's wild animals out there, now I feel like a little safer, but also, you know, as a retired person, uh, well, you know, retired, forced into retirement because I no longer functioned at the capacity that they wanted me to. Um, but anyways, the, but there's lots of noise, you know, and then the grumpy people across the street who hate me, like I'm the easy target. Uh, but the people next to me, you know, there's way more noise. There's lots of kids, lots of dogs. It's very noisy. And, you know, so if I want to go outside and sit and relax, you know, I'm listening to kids screaming and, you know, um, yeah, there's a two-year-old. There's a lot of screaming, a lot of screaming. So anyways, when I see stuff like that, where those people are getting to go and be around all people who are kind of in the same place as them in life. And that's what I think that is going to be a lot more of, you know, like right now they, I mean, they've been doing it for so long, taking people from their homes and shoving them in together and then um, shaming us into, you know, not getting along. And also they love that people don't get along because they'll kill each other and all this nonsense. But um, I think that there's going to be a lot more, you know, like uh, families that are more in the same kind of community and that they're going to figure out like, well, you know, what it would be the best way that, for us to do education and I think, you know, co-oping education is a smart way to do and decide what do our kids need to know? You don't need these stupid government certificates. That's that we participated in this nonsense. We said, oh, okay, we'll go after your certificate. You don't need those certificates. I know plenty of people who didn't even graduate high school who are super smart, very successful people. So it's just, it's nonsense. And it's part of the illusion. It's part of the bullshit that they sell us. But the thing in the movie that I wanted to talk about that drives me crazy is in this movie, they have people who, some of them I even went and looked it up. Like, how old are these people? You know, when they're sitting there trying to pretend like they're 60 and 65 years old and they look like they're 75 or 80. It's like, what? But that is the illusion. That is what they do. Like they put these people, like this stupid commercial. This is what reminded me, this damn ass commercial that I see all the time. This woman, she's uh, obviously, a, you know, a, a leader, CEO or something. You know, she's in charge of the board table. And the whole commercial is about her wearing Depends. And she is young. She's young, she's professional, but, you know, she's got her Depends on. It's like... <laughs> They tell us such nonsense. You know, I don't I, I don't even know anybody who wears Depends, honestly. I mean, you know, maybe there is some people out there and they're just very private about it. 
but like I've never heard anybody even complain like, oh, those damn Depends. Everyone can see them through my jeans or anything, you know, like they say on the commercials. You know, I just think so much of the stuff is made up and so much of it is them creating this illusion. It's how they've gotten, you know, all these kids to doubt their gender, to be confused. And, you know, how they are marketing people to not take care of themselves. I mean, they're showing like a 60 year old is, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be 60 in a couple days, you know, and I have said for a long time, your how you look at age and how you look at yourself, aging is coming from within you. So if you are you know, super old and decrepit, either you didn't take care of yourself or it is coming from in you. You have already decided, oh, 60, I, that's old. I'm going to be old. Just give up and wait to die. I'm not even going to get social security. They're taking that away and it's just more misery. And so you will make that happen. That will be what will happen. And the illusion is when they're showing you like this really ancient person, and calling them 60 and then you it, it feeds this neuroses in our head uh, and they're able to control the illusion and just like yesterday my um uh my son-in-law has got to get surgery and he's been waiting and waiting it's a stupid uh l and i so you know this has been going on forever but he's a roofer he was picking up something and when he turned it it's uh did something to his, uh, I think it's called a, I almost said hibiscus, um, the meniscus or something, something in his knee, as, as far as I understand. He's got to get some kind of surgery because it tore the ligaments that are holding him, you know, so his leg's unstable. And he's been waiting months and months and months for this. And so finally, you know, my daughter calls me the other night and she had been trying and trying to find us a trip. It was just stressing her. It was stressing her out. My 60th birthday was stressing her out more than stressing me out. And, uh, you know, she's got to have something really great, you know, great memory we, we create. And so, um, you know, we finally spend whatever, four or five hours on the phone to get these tickets and we get our Key West tickets and we go through, we're looking and um, because we're only going in six weeks or so that a lot of the rooms are taken and I don't know if they have any cheap rooms, but they don't have cheap rooms right now, I'll tell you that. And so we're going through trying to find all the, you know, rooms and stuff. It took hours and hours. And uh, finally we found a room that uh, worked, you know. And so then after we get all this planning done, she goes, Okay, now watch. They're going to call tomorrow and they're going to give him a surgery date while we're gone. <laughs> exactly what happened. Because we make the things happen that we think. And the more that we start really understanding this, I'm always, I'm constantly when I'm talking to my family and stuff, it's like just stay focused on the positive. Whatever you want to happen, try not to think about the negative. Focus on what you want to happen. Like for my daughter who... You know, I think she's stopping now because she kept having uh, miscarriages and, you know, and she works with people who have these and, but so she's, you know, she's decided I just, I can't do it anymore. I'm just going to stop. I'm going to focus on other things in my life. And, um, but when I was talking to her, I kept saying, you can have what you want, but you have to see yourself enjoying that, you know, have that be the story in your head, see yourself holding, you know, and this is to anybody who's going through any kind of struggles or whatever, and you know, and it's part of what they call this manifestation and stuff, the way you create what you, and it happens really simple. I mean, all my daughter had to do was say, oh, watch, she's going to get the date for surgery on the set dates that were gone. Exactly happened the way she said it was going to happen within the amount of time she said it was going to happen. And it can happen for everybody. It's it's our consciousness that is uh, creating and stopping all these things from happening, you know. And um, so, like, you know, if you want to have a baby, just keep picturing yourself holding that um, baby. You know, the things that you, the joy that you'll find from it. You know, uh, picture just like what I said about the trip. Yesterday when I was talking about the manifestation for the trip. 
You know, I started doing that. This is, uh, you know, if you want to go someplace, I started doing this a couple of years ago. Don't, you don't need to think about like, where am I going to get the money? Just start focusing on the trip and planning it. You put your intention out there. You begin to manifest it and it begins to fall into place. You don't have to figure out how it's going to fall into place. You just have to start the direction of where you want to go. And so, um, you know, when you start doing that, like I've gone to uh, Barcelona, Portugal, Costa Rica, and, um, and now going to Key West all within this last couple of years. And it is all just by doing that. You know, I don't have to be like, oh, I've got 3000 extra dollars. So I think I'll go on a trip. No, you don't have to do it that way. All you have to do is have the desire. Let your desires guide you. So you have the desire to go someplace. You have the desire to experience something. Then you start putting your motion towards that desire. You start you know, envisioning it, you start uh, um, experiencing it as if it is, uh, you know, already happening. So, you know, a, a lot of people can do that, like in meditation and stuff, you just, you start feeling it and seeing it, and you see what you want it to be. And then don't get put off because, you know, you tried it a couple of weeks and nothing happened. You know, you got to give them time. All you got to do is direct it, but you also got to have trust and patience and, you know, go with the flow because there's a lot of stuff to learn about this experience of manifestation and getting a handle on it and stuff. But, you know, that is any of the things that you desire. If it's a desire inside of you is coming from in your soul and your soul is guiding you. And um, so when you can direct your mind and follow that path, that path will start to develop itself. Some bug flying around my face. Sometimes I can't ever tell because when my eyes first started um, doing whatever it was that they started doing, because I didn't notice when they told me about the glaucoma thing, I had no idea that I wasn't seeing. And at the time when they noticed it, I hadn't lost any, because I had got tested all the time and I hadn't lost any of my peripheral. They had just noticed that I had damage to my optic nerves. So then, you know, they start trying to fix something that hadn't even happened yet and they cause a million more problems. But when it very first started really happening, there was like this flashing and I started seeing things going everywhere. It was like bugs. I was constantly like going like this, like, what is all these bugs? And, um, but they weren't bugs. They were these things in my eyes. <laughs> and now those things, you know, are huge. They're giant and I, I have a hard time seeing past them. So anyways, um, you know, I'm not going to stress out about it. I feel like the med beds are close that, you know, we'll be able to go in, but also, you know, this quantum healing system and stuff, it also takes you, you have to have control of your mind. You have to be able to go into these machines. As far as I understand, you know, is that you have to go into there and you have to believe these things are possible. And just like I said before, you know, you can't just go and be like, not take care of yourself, jump in the little bed and then think, oh, well, I'll heal up and then I'll just run out and not take care of myself. That's not how it will work. You have to have it in your mind about it's, it's going to be kind of like you connecting with this machine in a, a space that is beyond imagination. <laughs> so anyways, we're headed for some great times. If you're having a bunch of physical ailments and stuff, just try not to stress on them. Try not to get too focused on them. I keep trying to tell people. I know so many people who have so many things and I keep trying to say, you know, just hold out the med bed. Even, you know, my son-in-law with the surgery, you know, the um, having people cut into our bodies was never a good thing. And from what I understand, it's uh, probably gonna be something that's gonna be in the lost books of the Bible about, you know, we, we need to focus on healing ourselves and trusting and connecting and not, you know, trusting these people to cut into our bodies and take stuff out. We'll see how it plays out. I don't know. So anyways, just, you know, manifestation is a powerful tool. You can get the things you want and, um, 
you know, they're selling you an illusion all the time. You have to know things in your heart to see past their illusion. Uh, and it's all for manipulation. <laughs> but yeah, there's, there's definitely something about that they want to get rid of old people. They want old people to be sick. They want them all on drugs and sickly and stuff because they don't want information Historical information passed from generation to generation. That is how we expand. And, you know, it's how they keep control is to cause problems with that. So, anyways, um, you know, that's just, it's out around you. Just start paying attention and you'll start seeing. And, uh, you know, it's the same thing as, like, on Netflix. When they have, like, uh, you know, supposedly 18-year-olds playing 14 year olds and having sex. Well, I mean, man, if I was into that, that's great. Just tune in and I've got my whole fantasy right there. <laughs> you know, that's the thing is when we, um, when we try and base a society on depravity, then a lot of people become depraved. A lot of people become empty shells of themselves. So, you know, it is a, it's a surrender to that negative evil energy, the energy that, you know, can seem as it is um, intoxicating, but it is never going to be fulfilling. It's always going to leave you feeling shitty. That's, uh, that's just how it works. <laughs> so anyways, um, I'm going to go again. <laughs> so I'll talk to you later. Bye.